Hello, everybody, and welcome. We are the House of Wellness. Coming up, parenting made easy with do-it-yourself tricks for the home. So it's all about um, tips, resources and inspiration for mums to help them nail their mum life. Winning the war against the dreaded winter bulge. And avoiding the risks of dehydration and other sins of the skin. Your skin needs hydration simply to function well. A show for everyone who wants to start the day fresh, eat right and live a healthy life. And empower you to make better choices. Let's all get well, stay well, live well and look fabulous. Right here in the House of Wellness. Hello everybody, welcome to the show that's dedicated to your health over the next 60 minutes. Hope you can stick around and hello to you Zoe. Yes, hi Ed, hi everyone. Now it's a really important story today for couples of all ages. Yep. Getting that old electricity back in the relationship, you know what I mean Ed? Oh yeah, yeah, I've been telling our producers we should be doing a piece on rooftop solar electricity for months. Finally they've listened, it's good stuff. No, no. Nope, we're just, not doing it again, not just today. Just kidding. I reckon jokes like that could kill the spark. Yes. Yeah, you're dead and gone and over. <laughs> there is no spark left. No jokes. Gerald is with us. How are you going to help us out today? My joke's funny. Yours, pretty average, Ed. <laughs> That's how he keeps if, the spark alive. If, um, if you're having trouble sleeping, um, stay around for the A to Z of vitamins. I've got some great natural solutions. Looking forward to it. All righty. Now, on the subject of sleepless nights, let's talk about starting a family. The two go hand in hand. And it's not just our sleep that's affected when we have young ones. Yeah, tell me about it. When they're babies, it's the feeding, the crying, the nappies, the loss of your social life and your mind. And did I mention the lack of sleep? To but me, then, many times. Yeah, then they get mobile, crawling around the house and suddenly it has to be child safe. Yeah, yeah. And for some parents, that can actually be the most stressful time, letting them explore their new world but keeping them safe and happy at the same time. So, to find out how to make your home safe for kids or those new grandparents as well, we sent Joe Stanley to test out some parent hacks that may just lessen the stress. <laughs> it's no secret. <laughs> Being a parent to a two-foot-high trouble merchant is no easy job. Because while young children aren't capable of much, they are certainly capable of chaos. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like to be a parent you have to be an octopus. You're juggling working, housework, caring for your little one, all at the same time, and it feels a little bit impossible. So isn't it wonderful that some very clever people have come up with some very helpful shortcuts that means while you're busy over here, your little one is kept safe and entertained. But as that old African proverb goes, it takes a village to raise a child. However, as globalised, time-poor 21st century mothers and fathers, many of us are parenting without our families or friends nearby, or their collective wisdom to lean on. But it is this exact situation that has given birth to an information age phenomena known as the parent hack. Ingeniously simple shortcuts or bits of wisdom that makes your life as a parent a little easier. Guiding me through the world of parenting hacks today is Sarah Kelly, full-time mum as well as publisher, blogger and editor of kidmagazine.com.au. So it's a digital lifestyle mag for mums. So it's all about um, tips, resources and inspiration for mums to help them nail their mum life. To kick things off, kids and cars can be a diabolical combination for parents. Daddy is a poo, 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 poo. My daddy is a poo. You've got ready-made entertainment just sitting there on the windows in the back of the seat. Yeah, so um, on the back of the seat there, if you take um, a shoe bag that you'd normally put your shoes in on the back of your door, a few toys in there, they can just grab what they want. And the same on the window, they just uh, shower suction caddies. Yes, um, right, so clever. OK, love the car hacks, but now for the home. It is estimated that 320,000 children under the age of 15 are treated in hospital as a result of accidents, many of which are sustained within the home. But the majority of accidents are preventable. So to try out some great safety ideas, we're dropping in on Chantelle and 18-month-old Legatha, who is an expert at finding danger in all the safest places. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> it's like you do your own stunts, don't you? Yeah, simple pool noodle, slice it down one side, and all you do is just slide that one on there, 
slide one on the other side. And then if she hits her head there, it's soft and it's not going to hurt her like the corner of the table would. Transitioning your little demons from a cot to their bed can take some getting used to. And it's generally thought that falls from a height greater than three feet can result in injury. So Sarah has a great solution. When they're sleeping, you want to know that they are safe from falls. Sarah, again. Can you help me? We're going to pop it under the fitted sheet, pull it down. And so when they roll in bed at night, they're just going to hit the pool noodle. Ah. rather than falling off the edge of the bed. Oh, what a brilliant idea. Look at that. That is great, actually. Do you know what? A pool noodle could raise your child. A you pool could noodle could change your life. <laughs> Hack number three is a great way to recycle an old shampoo bottle and save your kids tripping over a stepping stool and your back from having to hold your kids up to wash their hands. Go wash your hands. And it's just an old shampoo or soap bottle. Mm -hmm. You just pop a hole in the top there and then the water comes out ah. at an angle. That is back saving right there. Mm -hmm. What a great solution. And yep. sustainability. Do it again, do it again. And put away, put away. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> and finally, what do you think of this? You're putting your bubba to sleep. I haven't got enough hands. What I have is a glove with some rice in it. Likes a little pat to just settle. Shh, back away. <laughs> Baby sleeps. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah. Good try. Okay. What do you think of this? <laughs> maybe, maybe some hacks are best left on the internet. <laughs> Great stories. Joe's with us now via Skype. And I love the way that you've been able to uh, sort of multitask yourself by uh, working in a fake hand onto your child. That's, that's brilliant. Some great tips. Yeah, the fake hand was a little bit creepy. Uh, I'm maybe not going to use that one. But it's good to be able to find ways to look at, after our children because, as you would know, the minute you have your first child, you're aware that they are determined to hurt themselves and you are determined not to break them. And so... See, that's where know. I'm really... I think I'm pro-leashes. And I just wanted to see your thoughts on that because, you know, I haven't made a definite decision, but a nice little leash to keep the child safe. Um, look, I was sort of anti-leash until a friend of mine at... Uh, it was our first play group and she had a son who was just a runner. He would just bolt. <laughs> and when I saw how fast he was, I was like, yes, I want to put him on a leash because I he could disappear at any moment, you know, in, into traffic or whatever. So <laughs> if it's right for you, Zoe, yeah. <laughs> then yes. I mean, he's only five months old. Let him learn to walk and Yeah, when, when I'm thinking, you know, he's learning to roll. I'll just leash him. You yeah, know? OK. Now, Joe, you've got some <laughs> other handy tips that work for you and your family. I'd love to see these. Yes, so my daughter is a keen artist, which is fantastic. You want to encourage creativity in your children, but it does mean that you end up with endless drawings. And, you know, you can only fit so much on your fridge. True. And I realised I needed this the day when my daughter found a picture in the recycle bin. Oh, and she says, oh, what's this, Mummy? I'm like, how did that get, get there, right? I don't know. So, <laughs> you know, you have to treasure all their artwork, but you can't manage putting them all on display all the time. I've come up with this great hack. You attach clipboards to your wall and then you can re put uh, uh, all the pictures and sort of rotate uh -huh. them around as they appear in your house and hang them beautifully. And these handy hooks, you know, they can just come right off when you are done with um, displaying that artwork. <laughs> and that you is want good. To That's them. very helpful. All right, what about some other handy tips that really work well in your family, Jo? All right, well, I am a bit of a closet sweet tooth. I like, I like a late night snack, but my problem is in my house, if I don't eat it straight away, it gets eaten by the husband or the child. I can't ever leave chocolate lying around. So I've had to hide it. And what I've done is I hide it in really healthy things. So you know that they're, they're not going to go there. The, the husband and the child are not going to look in quinoa for my hand and chocolate so snack. good. Or, or even... <laughs> Here we go. This should be interesting. Oh, who's going into the beans to look for chocolate? No, but oh. me, I know it's there. What about what's underneath? Hey. I, do I see a vodka bottle hidden Is there in the vegetables? Is that for help as well? <laughs> that, that's, my, that's Mummy's other helper. Yeah. Gotcha, which, gotcha. Um, you don't need to worry about that. Okay. <laughs>
Uh, look, got some great tips here too, Joe. As we see, this is the humble party popper. We know the way this works, yes. right? I'll let me fire it off, right? Great Yay. time. Sure. But this is yep. how the party popper can go to party stopper. Take a look at this. If you've got older kids, teenagers yeah. perhaps, sneaking in a little bit later than they perhaps should, say after a curfew when they uh, promised they'd Yeah, they, they are home. sneaking into the house I mean, way I, after curfew. This is why I always went through the window. Take the shoes off. Oh, oh, peek around, are they there? No. He, he looks familiar. Look at that. That is Who a is young that? Gerald Quigley. <laughs> Vagrant, sneaking back home. So what I've done is... 3 a.m. GQ! What are you doing at 3? I've taken the party poppers, fastened them to the door and boom! <laughs> gotcha. Caught ya. <laughs> I got Jeez. lost on the way home. I, I, it was not my fault. I couldn't get a cab. I, I didn't know which direction was north and south. And, and in honest, the meantime, someone had done that. <laughs> really? You know what? I prefer that attire on you. Oh, good. Mm. Yeah. The party <laughs> popper, curfew pooper. Joe, great story. Thanks for all those tips. Much appreciated. Thank you, Joe. Now, Thank you so much. <laughs> so much on the show today. We're looking at how to lose those kilos during winter. Yeah, I need boy. some help. But we've also got a beautiful cacao mousse that is good for you. See, that is my problem. Mm. I'm eating too much of the mousse. Yeah, I see what you're saying. It's all coming up here on The House of Wellness. Stay with us. Later, how to conquer your fear of the gym. But next on House Heroes, we meet a motorcycle gang saving lives across the country. One of my sons came along and a couple of friends and one who was a psychiatrist, another a psycho psychologist. We called ourselves Sykes on Bikes. There's plenty more to come here on The House of Wellness. Welcome back. Now, our house heroes this week not only have a love for motorbikes, but also a passion for helping others. They're called Sykes on Bikes, Inc. It's an organisation of mental health professionals, including psychiatrists, psychologists, nurses and counsellors. Yes, yeah, Sykes on Bikes. got a great ring to yep. it. I love the name. But it's not just their name or their passion for motorbike riding that's attracted our attention. It's their goal of raising awareness for mental health issues in remote and rural Australia that makes them so unique. Our main interest is in rural and remote mental health. We have a particular interest in suicide, and we have a particular interest in that case in men in rural and remote Australia. Men love motorbikes, and uh, so we strike up conversations with them around, around the motorbikes and, and hopefully um, sort of get, get them talking and, 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 and communicate on their level. One of my sons came along and a couple of friends and one who was a psychiatrist, another a psycho psychologist. We called ourselves Sykes on Bikes. So there were four of us who rode the Nullarbor in 2011 and that's how it started. Uh, when we arrive in a town, we, we'll always talk to the media and we'll always talk to the local mental health professionals. But the way that we actually have an interface and a communication with the community is that we offer free men's health checks. So please don't forget to come inside to get your free men's health check by Sykes on Bikes. Thank you very much. You know, if we roll into a town that has very few services, particularly mental health services, and we come in with 25 shiny brand new motorcycles, the men come out. They come out to look at the bikes and we can say, well, while you're here, can I just slap a blood pressure cuff on? How are you going? What's happening? You know, how are you travelling? If we can get a guy to sit down with a mental health nurse and open up a bit, that might not necessarily be relevant at that time, but in five or ten years' time, if he finds himself painted into a corner or feeling emotionally desperate, then at least he's had the experience of sitting down with a professional and talking about himself. I'd better get a check while I was here. I haven't had a check for many years and, and can't hurt, and I found out some good, good news, so it was well worthwhile. To me, Sykes on Bikes represents the perfect match of work and fun. You know, that there's a work element to it and we're trying to do something for the community, do something good, um, you know, and that makes us sound a bit holier than what we are because we have a hell of a lot of fun at the same time. Great work, guys. Isn't that a fantastic yeah. story? By next year, these Sykes on Bikes will have covered more than 40,000 kilometres touring with their cause. Yeah, it is an incredible cause. We all know how hard it is to get our men talking, so we Quite support right. you. Mm. Now, the hub, houseofwellness.com.au, is our website where you can find everything we talk about and so much more. And give us a buzz. 1-800-469-788. GQ's there. will answer your calls. And don't forget our Facebook page. It is where we can all be friends and hang out together.
Thanks, Zoe. Now, we all know about the need to get fit and stay fit, and the gym can be a key component in that. But the word gym can strike fear into many people. There's the body shame, thinking you look bad compared to all those fit, healthy people around you, or the fear of hurting yourself while you're working out. So, here to help us overcome what we call the gym jitters is fitness expert Andrew Papp joining the team. Nice to see you, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Mate, I kind of relate to this sort of jittery yeah. feeling. I started at your gym where you train a whole bunch of people at BeFit in uh, Sydney's Double Bay. You walk into a new environment, and you do feel a bit nervous. I mean, how do we come over this sort of lack of confidence in time? Yeah, that's right, and it's understandable. I mean, there's over 3,500 fitness facilities nationwide, which has oh. tripled since 2005. And over 3.5 million people do uh, participate in those facilities on average two times a week. But there's still many more Australians who aren't getting into the gym. And it's whether they're just afraid or just don't have the time. Oh, my God. <laughs> Hiya, boys. <laughs> hey. <laughs> no, I can tell you the gym was jittery when I walked in, but that's just the way it is. So without mice... Like it? Your suit? What, yes. This is what you I look like. just get no, my muscles suit, droop. his muscles. Oh, I see, I see. That's, that's real. Ooh. That's real. Okay. That's, that Gosh. is real. You try punching it, I'll, I'll punch you, you back. You think you know someone after working with him for a couple of years, but this is uh, Gerald Quigley and his finest. Now, okay. Andrew, we're, we're trying to learn here mm. in spite of it. So, um, what do you bench press these days? 120 kilos. Me, 115. But look, I'm getting there. Ed's um, 75, but working sure. up nicely. Well right. done, Ed. So what are you going to Thanks. teach us? Today? Yeah, let's start off with a, maybe a first exercise to get us rolling. Great. I want to prescribe something that's going to help uh, people at home get the confidence they need to understand their bodies, yep. get the right movement patterns, they're moving mm -hmm. well, so they can go into the gym feeling good about themselves. Let's do it. And get a bit of a burn. We're moving home. like a gazelle. Exactly. So we're going to show you, Gerald and I, Ed, how to get things done. So we're going to get our feet in the correct squatting position that's comfortable for you. Mm -hmm. so in the knees. We're going to push those hips back as we ascend Come down. Come on, Ed, get into it. Race through the core. Don't split your pants, though. Yeah. Okay, and as we push through the feet through the floor, squeeze through that butt all the way to the top. We get a nice squeeze at the top. So that's yeah. the hip hinge position. I felt the squeeze. Right. And now we're, going to now we're going to drop down into the squat. So yeah. we're going to get a bit more angle uh, in, in, the, in the knee joint and the hip joint. Come to the bottom and get back to the top. So we've had a hip hinge and a squat, two fundamental yeah. moving patterns, 10 to 20 reps each. I do five, he does 20. Of course, yeah, a total of Good. 25. Yeah. By the way, I mean, there's something like 65% of people who start a fitness and fat losing program, but they don't see it through. Mm. Does this become something like a motivation issue? How do you see it? Well, it's a common narrative where people are relying on motivation and as you know, Gerald, motivation comes and goes. It's about discipline. We have to understand I'm not always you know, motivated to get out of bed yeah. early in the morning, but I'm disciplined because I understand the benefits of getting out of bed. OK, all right. Well, let's do another exercise. Right. We'll okay. talk about discipline with you a little right. bit later. I've just noticed your shirt says quigger later. <laughs> quigger later with a lightning this. bolt. It's covering the six pack. Yeah. I know I did not make it for myself, sorry. This yeah. was made by the gym. All right. Okay? We're lucky you're wearing your shirt. Standard. Put another exercise shade. for us. Let's go. So we're going to work on the upper body now. Yeah. So I'm going to come down. You want me to do this, Gerald? Yep. Yes, I'll stay on my toes. You can, go, you can go on your knees, Gerald. So right. it's scalable. We're going to come okay. down to the push up Gerald, position. You can do a full one, buddy. <laughs> As Look we at come those up, muscles. one hand onto the opposite shoulder. So up and down, this is teaching your body a lot of core mechanisms are functioning here. And we're getting the upper body strength. So again, Amy? 10 to 20 repetitions, depending on the Three person. Three for me. Three for you, 20 for you. You really fight the twist, don't you? Um, exercise is so important. Finish this question for me. Why should we exercise? Just to increase the you know, quality of health. And we live life. longer. We keep yeah. moving. And often we're socially engaged. So we meet people. We meet yeah. friends. That's good. You meet what? the quigger later. Quigger later. Yeah, what more I frighten people away. motivation do we need? See you later, quigger later. Bye. Andrew, thanks so much for those tips. We're back with stacks more after the break here on The House of Wellness. Later, we're getting it on and bringing that spark back to our relationships. And next, we're moosing it up for the taste buds with a delicious cacao dessert. Stay with us, we're mixing and blitzing in the kitchen here on the House of Wellness. Today's chocolate dessert is a big bowl of goodness with that brilliant anti-aging supplement, Marine Collagen. For our base, we use a rich, ripe avocado. Then add two tablespoons of cacao, vanilla extract with maple syrup, and a quarter of a cup of creamy almond milk, and one teaspoon of Marine Collagen. to a smooth paste, then garnish with raspberries and a sprig of mint.
What a creation mm, from our healthy mm. chef, nutritious to delicious. It's the cacao mousse with BioGlands organic I'll have cacao a little bit. powder. Okay. I've been there. <laughs> Yummy. It's you know good. what? I love me a mousse. It's good. And did you know? Mm-hmm. Mm. Cacao <laughs> powder is a natural source of magnesium and iron. Do you good. want a little? Okay. It's both important for energy production, right? And if that isn't a good enough reason for me to eat it every night, I have no other reasons. <laughs> so I can have Beautiful. it every night. Mm. And there's a little pathway. So cacao, okay. cocoa, which a lot of us have grown up with, and dark chocolate. Benefits all round. Uh -huh. Okay, you two. Moose time for me. Let's get into that uh, special time of the show, though. Your calls. Standing by, we go to Margaret from Blackburn in Victoria first up. How can we help you? My daughter has a nine-month-old little girl, but she's having a lot of trouble uh, with her teeth. I'm just wondering if there's anything to rub on her gums that's natural, if possible. So it's Margaret's granddaughter. It yes. really hurts the little ones when the teeth come through. And there's no real medical condition saying teething, so it's yes. a frustrating time. The kids don't sleep, they're irritable, they dribble, uh, nappies fall apart. Margaret, there are some superb homeopathic ingredients that your pharmacist will help you with, which will address all of those really? symptoms. A package, both orally and a gel to put on as well. That's that is good. fantastic okay. to know. Now, next up we have Susan from Acton Park in Tasmania. It's an email. Mm -hmm. She says, my thyroid is underactive. Aside from prescription medication, is there something that can help? Thyroid, Zoe, is a tiny little gland that sits up here and it's responsible for almost everything that goes inside that little body of yours. Wow. It just works over time. Mm. So Susan has got low thyroid function and it's important that her GP help her get that stable. And that's very important. Okay. And once it's stable medically, then fresh fruits and vegetables, a couple of foods, the cruciferous vegetables, which are really lovely. Is that broccoli and things? Yeah, they, they mm. can be, and uh, Brussels sprouts and things. They probably should be not commonly used for a person with low thyroid. All right, quick one. Let's go to Elizabeth from Forestville in New South Wales. Go ahead. Now I want to use vegetables and fruit to bring down the blood pressure, but I'm on all the tablets as well. What do I do? OK, so her foods and, and pharmaceuticals, she's wondering which ones will mix. And well done, Elizabeth, because if you look at fruits and vegetables, you'll control your weight far better, mm -hmm. and that's going to help lower your blood pressure. And don't forget my favourite, aged garlic extract twice mm. a day. You do love that one. I do. Great tips. We'll have some more of your calls a little bit later on the show. Stay with us for more here on The House of Wellness after the break. And, yes, we are right across Australia, beaming out on the Seven Network and the Prime Network. Mind, body and spirit, we've got you covered. Coming up, how to win the battle of the winter bulge and keep those kilos off. And next, skin health and loving the skin you're in. Our skin is actually exquisitely designed. We'll be back here after the break on the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the show. Now, here's one for the nerds. The average adult has approximately two square metres of skin covering Ugh. their bodies. That's a lot of skin. That's a lot. It's actually about the size of this whole bench, two That's square yuck. metres. Don't do it like that. That's yucky. We need to take care of our skin. We should feed it vitamins, protect it from the harsh Australian sun and hydrate it, but we're not always so kind to yeah, our skin. You're right. Outside UV rays knock us around. Inside, the air con is dehydrating us, so we sent Zoe Bingley Pullen out to learn how to love the skin we're in. Our skin is the biggest organ of our body and probably the most fascinating. The story of our lives can be shown on our skin, where we come from, our age, the type of lifestyle we lead, and it can even protect us from toxins. Now, in Australia, we're pretty smart when it comes to protecting our skin from the sun, but I want to learn what else we can do to help to keep our skin healthy. Our skin is a big deal. It regulates our body temperature, it's critical to our immune defence, it produces vitamin D, and our skin determines how we sense the world we live in. But with more than 3,000 known skin disorders, and many of us wanting healthier, clearer, glowing skin, no other organ demands as much attention and concern. And according to Ole principal scientist David Koo, our skin is a supreme protector. Our skin is actually exquisitely designed. Um, it's designed to protect you against the environment, of course. Um, the cells of your skin are arranged like bricks in a brick wall and they're sealed by lipids. Together, they provide this excellent barrier against the environment. In our modern lifestyle, 
skin's defenses become overwhelmed, so they could use a little bit more help, and that's where the active ingredients in skincare come in. Skincare rituals have existed for thousands of years. Ancient Egyptian women used soaps made of clay and olive oil to cleanse and nourish their skin. And to this day, the quality of our skin is still linked to our sense of health, wellness and beauty. However, in the 21st century, our environmental pollution and our modern lifestyles affecting the health of our skin. Many people only start focusing on it once there is a problem. According to researchers at Monash University, Australian women are ageing up to 20 years faster than European or Northern American women because of their exposure to high levels of UV radiation. As a result, a really important part of our skin health is hydration or the amount of water in our skin. Your skin needs hydration simply to function well. There are enzymes in your skin that cannot function without water. These enzymes are, for example, responsible for the renewal of your skin. This is professional lifeguard Juliana King. Her lifestyle involves hours and hours of exposure to the sun every day. So her skin endures lots of punishment. I mean, you're setting up pretty early in the morning. Most shifts during summertime start at 6 and finish at 7 in the evening. So, you know, that's... 13 hours of sunshine and salt air and, and wind. So do you use any moisturisers? No, I don't. You know, I wash my face in the morning and the evenings and my biggest thing is just scrubbing it enough to get the zinc off that I wear <laughs> each day. To see how harsh Juliana's lifestyle has been on her skin, we visited the Pitt Street Cosmetic Clinic. This Vizier machine tests UV damage, skin texture and other skin health factors and gives you a score compared to other people of the same age and ethnicity. Dr Midju Kim explains Juliana's results. Yes, so the overall result shows that Juliana's got quite a lot of sun damage for her age. Um, in terms of her texture and pores, she's lost a lot of elastin in the skin, so, and also that could reflect dehydration in the skin from being constantly in salt water. For example, she scored 9% in her UV spots, which means she's um, in the lower 9% of people of her age and her ethnicity. While we all love the lifestyle our sunburnt country allows us, research shows that by the time most of us are 25, we've already experienced long-term sun damage. Juliana, for instance, has been a lifesaver since she was 18 years old. So rehydrating her skin will be a key part of repairing any damage she experienced. Now, moisturizers come in many forms, but one thing is certain. To repair skin damage and leave it feeling healthier, the top layer of our skin needs to contain at least 10% of water. So it's essential to use a moisturiser that works its way deep into our skin. A recent innovation is this infuser tool developed by Ole. By massaging this specially designed formula into her face with the magnetic applicator, Juliana's damaged skin is said to be rejuvenating its foundations, up to 10 layers of skin deep. I feel like it's making a difference and I feel like my pore size is looking smaller. Juliana has two weeks before her next skin test. So the key to any kind of change will be consistency and routine. Um, so, I mean, for the time being, my skin feels lovely, but I guess time will tell um, to see if there is a true result or not. After 14 days of taking much more care of her skin than ever before, Juliana's second skin examination reveals some excellent results. We have seen some positive improvements in the wrinkles, textures and pores. Yeah. Um, from 4% to 13%. So if you keep on using those products, um, you would see further improvements. Hydrate from the surface, but also drink lots of water to hydrate from within. That was a really kind of positive result. There's definitely some, some tricks that I can use now to really kind of enhance my skin and just kind of keep it where it is rather than, you know, it deteriorating through more sun damage. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Now, you know what was fascinating to me was Juliana and her results. So it's really important to actually analyse your skin correctly because mm. on the surface, Juliana's skin looked beautiful, yeah. impeccable, but when you look deeper into the layers, there was a lot of sun damage. I think we that's foremost, isn't it, with us in Australia, with that's our terrible climate. Yeah. yeah. 
Look, I love the sun. I live at Bondi Beach. And I think it's really important that we're not only protecting ourselves from UV damage, it's also about the layers of hydration that we need within our skin. It's a lot to do with how we live our life and our diet. Avoiding diuretic-based foods, coffee, alcohol, uh, too much soft drinks in the diet, and making sure that you're getting a huge variation in the type of foods that you eat. Big antioxidants, big beta carotene, lots of colourful fruits and vegetables in the diet. That is the winning formula when it comes to eating to protect our skin from the inside out. Now, Zoe, you got to meet the great Dr. David Koo, the principal scientist at Olay, right? Now, he's showed us a new way to hydrate our skin with the Magna Mask Infuser. I loved the way he described it. It's like bricks and layers. Mm. So what this actually does is help to get to the moisturiser deeper within our skin and really helps to radiate our skin. We want to make sure that our diet and our skincare product are working best for us. <laughs> Great work. Thanks so much, Sally. Thanks. And don't forget, you can catch the House of Wellness Radio Edition Sunday mornings. We've got stacks of great advice from all the team. Yes, I love it. You can't miss us. We are literally across the country, so make sure you tune in. Tune that dial, as you like to call it, Ed. Yeah, there's a dial. Lo <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Loads of great information. <laughs> now, during the winter months, we all find it pretty hard to keep fit, right? And ignoring that alarm and staying in bed on a cold yeah. morning is pretty hard to resist. Leaving your nice warm house, maybe for a walk or a run in the evening, is just as challenging. Yeah, not only that there's the temptation to eat all those yummy high calorie comfort foods during those cold oh look at that mm. cold months and you know what I give into that desire a little too often you know and surprise surprise can't fit up the jeans can I can't do them up <laughs> so here to help us beat those winter kilos is dietitian and nutritionist Susie Burrell hello, hello. Oh. fresh back from eating lots of pasta overseas oh, we're sort of jealous but we need your advice <laughs> so for all of us that weren't in Europe why is it that we put on weight in winter? Well, often we give ourselves permission to eat more because it is slightly cooler. But let's be honest, in Australia, perhaps it's not as cold as we might think. Mm. But out comes the comfort food. So the pasta and the pizza and watching mm. the footy. So we have some meat pies. And of course, the biggest issue is that we're sitting down a lot more. We're yes. not getting to the gym early. That's we cold. want to stay in bed. And the gradual kilo creep does happen. It's a real thing. And we often don't lose those kilos that we've gained. It must be the most often asked mm. question to you from your clients. What can I do about this little creep of the kilos? Well, act now, because before we know it, it'll be spring and we need to reveal that skin. So it's yeah. about taking control and focusing on the low-calorie winter foods. So using things like a soup and substituting that in for a meal, using your roasted veggies, and then keeping those high-fat foods, anything that contains pastry, to oh. an absolute minimum. You know, once or twice a week, it's not a daily occurrence, even though they might be putting chocolate biscuit ads on TV when we're watching Netflix at night. Ideally, we'll limit it to just a couple of times each week. Being mean to pastry. I'm not. I know. Okay. Any other ways that we can manage it? Like, should we be eating salads in winter? Well, you can do a hot salad. Which yeah, sounds odd, but the hot show. roasted veggie salads, you can do casseroles, roast, and just load up the vegetables. And where you can, substitute in a meal of soup a couple of times each week and just make sure you're increasing the activity. So make mm. some dates with a friend, enrol in, and Zumba get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Put your name down for an event, anything that can limit that high calorie food, because now we're on the downhill slide to spring, so we really want to act quickly. Mm. What about just sort of opening up the pantry and throwing out the naughty stuff. It must be a good purging kind of um, routine to get get into. Well, if it's in the house, you will eat it. Yes. So if you open the cupboard and you see apple pie and you see chocolate biscuits and you see a block of chocolate, it's be a good night. you will eat it. So that is the first step, loading up on the fresh fruits and vegetables and also having some healthy options available. Mm. So there's a number of low-calorie hot chocolates you can get, a little bit of dark chocolate, some Greek yogurt, yeah. baked fruit, the veggie platters when you're watching TV. Now, these are the daily experiences that mean that we're having healthier options. So when you do want to have a special occasion treat or you are at the pub, you don't have to worry because you had your Monday yeah. to Friday diet, nice and clean and having healthy food. And I heard the way that you kind of get into shape is popping on that swimsuit, right? Is that <laughs> what we should do? We should Good pop one. on our swimsuit. It scares us into, you know, working out. Good if the tip. jeans are tight, pop the cosy on, have a look in the mirror yeah. and it will spur you to action very quickly. Oh my God. Soups can be your friend, maybe putting on the cosy in July, August and not so good. Thank you, Susie. Thank Always you. great to have you on the show Thank here. You. Don't go anywhere. Still plenty more to come here on the House of Wellness. Later, if it's a good night's sleep you're after, then stick around. The A to Z of vitamins is for you. Next, how to bring the romance back into your relationship. All will be revealed. And we'll be back with that after the break here on the House of Wellness.
Welcome back. Well, we all know this story. Boy meets girl, sparks light up, and we're soon behaving like characters in a cheap romance novel. But for some, years later, or even months later, those sparks have uh -oh. faded, leaving yeah. you questioning your relationship. But could it be as simple as our lifestyles keeping the passion at bay and the sparks away? Well, here to answer that intimate question is relationship expert Dr Nikki Goldstein. Nice to have you back, Dr Nikki. Thanks for having me. Now, to quote a little salt and pepper... <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> I like that line. I like that I line. Know. It should be my ringtone, but I haven't worked <laughs> out how to do it yet. How do we get the sexy back? Well, I think this is the question that everybody wants to answer because I feel like it's now the norm that we all feel like we get to a point where we're struggling in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But what we need to focus on, that it's not always exactly what's going on in the bedroom, that there are other things outside of the bedroom that have this flow on effect. So if you're feeling resentful towards your partner, if there's a lot of lack of luster outside of the bedroom in everyday life, then it's very natural that you're going to see things also declining on the physical intimacy side of things. That makes sense. So you quoted Salt and Pepper and Justin Timberlake in the one question, well done you, for <laughs> starters. Now if we don't have you on speed dial, what are some signs that yeah. we're maybe losing a little bit of spark in a relationship? Well, I think there is the obvious one. You know, there may be a lack of sex going on in the relationship, but also I feel that when you physically pull away from each other, you know, are you affectionate? Are you touching? Are you kissing? You know, are you just two strangers living side by side? Yeah. You know, we will see other things happen in the relationship where a couple starts to feel disconnected. You know, we actually need to really look at the purpose of sex in a relationship. You know, it's not smutty and it's not a terrible negative thing. It's something that a couple can do to bind them together, to yes. bring them closer, to experience that intimacy do you think that our busyness is stopping us from being intimate or giving ourselves 100%. time? Do we actually need to log in time, the diary, <laughs> intimacy or connection time or whatever you want to call it, hand-holding? Like, that's what? when you need that ringtone to go off. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when you know it's the time. Well, I do think it's important that we should schedule sexy time. You, know, you don't ever want to be putting the pressure on somebody that this is the time where we should be doing that thing, but more about this is a time where we should be be alone, affectionate and disconnected from the outside yeah. world. But we do use this term busy too often and we start to put the relationship down the list of importance. Totally. When you don't feel important, you don't feel like somebody wants you and desires you, you're not going to necessarily feel like physically connecting with them, are you? Mm. OK, but running parallel to this is life, right? And there might be some resentments or other issues. So how do we get over those and bring a little bit of the sexy back? Well, I think it's really important to look at the iceberg of communication. You know, often people will focus on what's the top and think, oh, we have this bedroom issue. But are you talking about the underlying issues? Are you talking about what's going on deep in the relationship? I think it's also important to focus a little bit more on yourself. And we've spoken about the role of selfishness before, but it's really important to get back to that happy sense of self because when you're happy and you're yeah. doing the things that you you're want... You're attractive, You right? are attractive, but you're a better person to be in a relationship with and you can give back to that relationship as well. So it's a little bit of relationship issues, it's a little, little bit of self issues as well. self-reflection, you know, should I be pursuing a little bit more, not just expecting someone to turn up for me? Yes, but this is the thing is you need to actually communicate all about that to work out those dynamics. What is it that works for you and your yeah. partner? Mm. It amazes Find me that we... In yeah. the diary, you've got lots to do. There's a to-do <laughs> list of getting the mm. sexy. The bad news, fellas, is we need to communicate a bit more. As Dr Nikki says, good luck with that. We'll let you guys lead that, perhaps, to help get the spark back. Um, there might be some underlying emotional issues I think you touched on as well. Mm. Sort those out. I like the uh, I like iceberg analogy. Too. You can go and see a counsellor. That can be really helpful. Well, I always think therapy is like the face for the mind. You know, oh, sometimes it's maintenance. Yes, yeah. for you know, don't mind. be scared of getting help because no one teaches us how to be in a relationship. No, no one teaches us how to get this right. So sometimes it's better to go and get help yes. before you get to that point where it feels all too late. All right, well, that's why we come to you. Thanks for your expertise, Thank you, Dr Nikki. Nikki. Uh, we'll be back in just a sec here on the House of Wellness. Welcome back to the show. A to Z of Vitamins time now and Gerald Quigley, the Quigglator, is back with us. We were discussing at the top of the show getting to sleep or sleeping through the night or even Please. the disruptions that our shift workers have, which we covered on last week's show as well. What about some nice remedies to get some Z's, please? The big challenge here, Ed and Zoe, is that everybody's different. So the reason you don't sleep is different from 
why Zoe doesn't sleep, or perhaps sometimes when I don't sleep. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk today about a different nutrient that's food-based, mm -hmm. and it's cherries. Oh. Not the cherries we buy and we have with whipped cream, but Montmorency... The Maricella cherries, maraschino. The maraca cherries, but no, that's you know why the you're not sweet cherries they put on um, desserts, maraschinos. Are they? We want to talk today, Zoe, about Montmorency cherries, which are tart or sour cherries, okay. because they have some melatonin in them. Uh -huh. Now, that's the neurotransmitter that helps other neurotransmitters in the pathway Yum. for sleep. Okay. So it helps regulate everything. No drowsiness, no dramas, and it's a very simple option where maybe other things don't work. Yeah, good one. So when I'm taking a product like the cherries... Yes. When should I be taking them? Is it better to take them before food, after food, before I go to sleep? You know, sometimes vitamins are absorbed better at different times. About half an hour before you go to bed. Now, unless you, even if you have a big snack before you go to bed, it doesn't matter. So okay. about half an hour before. Okay. So will it keep you drowsy in the morning? No, Ed. This is, we're talking here about neurotransmitters, so mm -hmm. we're re-establishing normal function. You'll be fine in the morning. Mm. All right, fantastic advice. The A to Z of vitamins brought to us by Go Healthy. For healthy energy and vitality, try New Zealand's number one premium supplements now available in Australia. Time for a couple more calls and Let's questions before we go. Hang on the line is Michelle in Canberra. How can we help you out? I was wondering what foods or supplements I could take to lower my blood sugars. OK, let's sort that. that diabetes, that. epidemic of diabetes, Ed. Things like, Michelle, cinnamon, Ooh. cherries... Mm -hmm. Delicious. Fruits and vegetables, all of those things will help, particularly vegetables, balance blood sugar. OK. So it's a matter of being sensible in your food options. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they'll all work well with any medication. Fantastic. An email from Romina in Fern Hill, New South Wales. She says, I have a fatty liver disease and would like to know what is the healthy re recommended diet to assist in reducing the fat in my liver. We're talking carbs, Zoe, and it's, it's a misnomer. Fatty liver is actually not being able to metabolise carbohydrates properly. So what you've got to do, Romina, cut right back on your carbohydrate intake. Mm. Look at healthy oils, but cut back on the carbs. Because you would think fat, you fatty would, liver, yeah. but it's not. And the herb of choice, milk thistle. Thank you. All righty. Terrific questions. Keep them coming via our website as well. A great show today. We've got another cracker coming up next time. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at the bad germs and the good germs that surround us every day. Goodness. That story's a real eye-opener. You love <laughs> Oh, I am a germ... Don't touch touching. me. Sorry, sorry. I'm a germaphobe. We'll also have some been. timely tips on dealing with exam stress. So much good information coming our way. What got you thinking today? I'm still thinking about the moose. And I know we <laughs> talked about keeping it trim in winter, but I'm thinking about eating that moose. We're going to need to bring the moose back Please. in a sec. Don't forget all this and more on our website, houseofwellness.com.au. Thanks again, Zoe, and to the team, and to the Quigga later. Quigga later! Yeah. That was my favourite part. I might be back. Thanks to the gang at Chemist Warehouse. Have a healthy and well week. Bye.